Good afternoon, Happy Crafters. How are you all? Thank you for joining me, Tony Derrick, live in my studio here in Wakefield. For those of you who don't know who I am, I'm a guest presenter over on Create and Craft, and I love anything to do with ink, stamps, dyes, painting, learning. So the purpose of the studio is to encourage anybody at home who has maybe got lots of stuff that they haven't used or lots of kit or wants to get on and try but just needs a little bit of a kick to get going so if you are watching on facebook don't forget to drop a comment below that puts you in with a chance to win one of our studio makes and if you are watching over on youtube don't forget to click the subscribe button the more subscribers means more people sharing the inspiration we put out in the studio each week so in today's demonstration we are going to go through artistic mounts these were live yesterday on create and craft and thank you to everybody who purchased them you won't be disappointed so i'm just going to show you a couple of techniques to get the most out of them so yesterday we did a lot of stamping and today we're going to do a lot of die coin so i'm just going to quickly show you through some of the elements that were in the show yesterday just in case you missed the show or there are products still available over on create and craft a few bits of um stamp and die coordinations um, knocking around so if you do like anything you see today you can go over there and get it or you can pop onto our facebook onto our website and pop in facebook live into the search engine and that's where you'll find all the products that we've used um, in our studio over the course of the last however many weeks if you are just wanting some inspiration that's also fine dig out the stash that you may have at home and see if you can incorporate the techniques we use within today's videos so I'm not going to go through them um, in great detail, but I'm just going to do a quick pick and flick so you can see what um, we launched yesterday. So basically these are our artistic mounts with the frame that makes it look like you have mounted your artwork. They are an artistic frame. You also get the coordinating floral elements in there so you can make um, frames where you pop flowers around and things like that. So we have a varying varying shapes so I'll just set this aside so I'm just going to go through the shapes we have this one we have this one with the large floral element at the bottom we have this one which is like a Moroccan tile with the open spaces on there these have all been drawn in such a fashion that they work seamlessly with the frame so if you buy one frame you have everything you need to create a beautiful card I've got Daisy one there this is quite a large one as well and another one there with those on there and then you have your coordinating dies the coordinated dies have the nesting element of the dies in there as well so large to small and in some of them you get the large die that goes around the floral elements <laughs> you have the large die that goes around the floral elements and you have your small dies that go around the other floral elements so it depends on which which one goes around the flowers but you just need to check the packaging just to see which dies come coordinating some have the outlines around the larger ones and it's all size permitting really they all go whether they go around the large dies or the small dies right so today's demonstration then we're going to use the die element on there and I'm going to show you how to create a card from the shape that you have on there. So I'm just going to be using my snap machine today and make sure it's turned on. So I have a top folding note card and I'm going to use the large die on there. And basically, the largest die within this collection, I'm just going to pop on here. I'm just going to overhang it over here. So basically, what will happen is the die will not cut through this top folding note card. You will just get a line, like so. Can we see there? So I'm just going to hold that in place with some low-tack tape. So I'm just leaving like a millimetre. So the cutting line on here is just over the hinge of this card. There we go, hold it in place. And then I'll run this through the snap machine. And you just need to make sure the cutting line does not connect with the top of that card. So I'm just going to double check that before I go ahead and do it. So I'm just going to make sure I leave a little gap there so I can see the plate through the gap. So hold it in place. There we go. 
So I'm just going to run that through the snap machine. Hopefully what happens is when you take your tape from the card, you have an instant shaped card. You see that there? So it's, quite, it's pretty cool in the sense that it's um, a diff an alternative shape to a general sized card. So we're going to make two cards using different frame shapes on this one. So I'll just move this one out of the way. So don't forget to leave the little die cutting line over the hinge of the cardstock and that's where you'll get your shaped card. So I'm just going to pop this inside the Eureka here. I'm going to pop my, my um, magnet in the centre and I'm going to use the coordinating stamp. I'm just going to place it on top. Now I'm not overly concerned that my magnet is sat in the middle because I can still go ahead and stamp. So I'll place this face down on here. I'll just make sure the stamp picks it up. I'm going to use a sticky ink pad and I'm also going to use a anti-static bag. I'm just going to lightly dust all over and this gives us a really nice neat finish and then with the clear sticky ink pad I'm just going to go around the frame and cover it with the lovely sticky ink get nice coverage on there and I am going to take my time with it because I really want it to be a, a really neat card so just make sure I get coverage on there there we go and when I come to stamp it down I'll make sure I get all the way around covering every area make sure it connects all the way around I am pushing harder than normal because the magnet is in the centre And I can see that's covered nicely. So I'll just move this out of the way. We'll just grab some gold embossing powder. Just going to hold it in the centre. Give it a tap. I'm just going to take it off shot and just give it a good shake. And then all the areas where I've got a little bit of excess powder, I am just going to remove with um, a brush so it stays neat and professional. Keep it tidy as, <laughs> tidy as we can. So I have missed a little of the area here with the embossing pad, so I'm just going to go in and make sure that's covered nicely. There we go. So I'll just set this aside. I'm going to get my gun good and hot. So less time heat on the card, the less warp you get in your card. Once the powder starts to change, move it on. And what happens is you get this beautiful, like, um, 
foiled frame around. It looks like it's been through a foiled machine. So I'll just set this aside. So what I did then after that, ahead of time, to save time, is I've die cut one of the elements from the nesting die that's the next size down. So this is going to sit direct in the middle like so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to decorate this one first. So I'm just going to pop this into my Eureka. And I'm going to use the daisies on this one. And we're going to do some quite um, faint daisies on this one. So I'm just popping the daisies on there and I might do that up there. No, we will. We'll go high like so. I'm going to stamp this out in a waterproof ink because it is going to be coloured. So, well, on this one, I'm going to use a grey one rather than your traditional black. So, I'm just going to ink the stamp. You get like a different tone when you use a different coloured ink pad. So whilst we have our Eureka out, I am going to stamp the sentiment also, to see if it fits. Just cleaning the back of it. So. Now I don't mind if my sentiments go through my artwork, I actually quite like that. So I am going to stamp this one out in black, make sure it's straight. leave it as is I don't want it much darker so I'm just going to quickly use our colour essence and I'm just going to pick your, your basic daisy colours so I've just got a small paintbrush here just a size 4 and we will just use the basic daisy colours in the centres here just to bring this to life now you could use your sparkle gossip pens make it sparkly traditional watercolours whatever you may have in your stash just add a bit of orange. So no technique to this one, I'm literally just going in with the colour and adding some. This is just going to give our little mini card a lift and these mini cards are absolutely fabulous for gift cards and things like that, should you want to do something a little bit different. So if you didn't buy our Artistic Mount Set Collection 1, they have a lot of foliage in there, so you could go ahead and mix and match these. Make some beautiful flowers. So I'm not going to overdo that one, I'm just going to um, dry that one off. I'm going to do with this one is I'm just going to put some glue behind and mount it straight in the centre of this frame, gold frame we've just done. Get plenty of glue on there, just let it come down. There we go. this straight in the centre, like so and you've got an instant beautiful card, look at that, where you could put a lovely sentiment in the centre if you wanted to, but just a one layer card, flat with a beautiful gold border on there, quite classic looking really. So that's card number one, so that's very, very, very basic card, but really, really effective, if you did a bun whole bunch of these you could do a 
note card bunch with envelopes or something. So let's move on to our second demonstration. So this time we're going to use the, an alternative shape. We're going to use this one and I'm going to do exactly the same as we did with our other. So whichever one you buy, whichever collection you do buy, you know you can make your own shaped cards. So I'll put my card blank on there like so. I'm just going to pop it over so it hangs over the top again so I can see the plate underneath. Make sure it's lined up so I get all the cutting, cutting lines on there. Just get some tape. And when you're happy you've got the die over the edge of your card, you can run it through your die cutting machine. I'm using the snap today, but you can use any machine you have in your stash. It helps if you use your last plate. How's it? It won't cut. Just pop this one underneath. There we go. So this time we're having a black card, but you could do these in any colour you wanted to. So when you take it out, we have an alternative style. So we have a black one on this occasion. So if you're making wedding invites or table names and things like that, that's super cool. So before I go ahead and deal with that one, I have some white cardstock here and I'm just going to create myself a background. Now you know how much I love my background, so I'm just going to create a bit of a background for my die cut. So a bit of orange on there. I'm using my gossip pens again, which I absolutely love. Let's pop a bit of red in there too. I'll just dry that one off, them off, and then I've got a nice patterned background ready for the next element of this card. Make sure it's absolutely dry. Then what we're going to do is we're going to run our frames through the die cutting machine again. So I'll just move this one out of the way for now till we come back to it. So within the same collection then we get our nesting element of dies in there. So we're gonna, this is what's going to create our lovely like watercolour frame. So you pop one, now I'm going to cut one and then I'm going to cut the other. So I'm going to pick the best part of this coloured image I like. So let's go with that one. So I'm just going to run this one through. And then what I'll do is I'll pop the smaller one inside. And it'll create me a little watercolour frame. get this lovely element here look which is quite cool we're going to take it one step further and I'm just going to pop this one inside so I'm going to end up with a lovely like watercolour frame on there run this one through So the centre elements that all pop out, don't throw them away because they will be useful. You probably will use them on an alternative card. Might even get two cards for the price of one. And then you end up with this beautiful like border here, look, which is fabulous. And I would save that. You could pop that inside the card if you wanted to. So inside so it coordinates if you wanted to. 
So let's set that aside. Right, so let's go back and revisit the what we did earlier with our other card to make it look quite classic looking. Let's pop this inside and we'll do it this way. Now I'll just find the um, coordinating stamp for that one. Um, we have, let's have a look. Excuse me. This one. So the stamp that we're using for this one is this one. So it's got the beautiful flowers around, although we're not using the flowers, but the stamp is quite a large one. And I use this one because it creates a lovely shaped card. So we're going to do the heat embossed again. And I think. Sorry. I think we might use our mica powder, abstract powders and we're going to use the orange. So just one second, let's just sort this one out, I'm just grabbing, trying to find my abstract powders quickly. So I'm going to use this one, look, the beautiful orange. Now if you've not used our abstract powders before, they are like a mica powder. You can paint with them, you can put them in a bottle, you can spritz with them, you can do all the lovely things that you want to do with them. Just because it's powder, it doesn't mean it doesn't work. So I'm just... One second, thank you. So to use the abstract powder, you need to use your sticky ink pad and the stamp. I've just quickly grabbed another stamp. Won't be a second. Oh, it's getting a little bit chaotic here at Stamps By Me today. The phone and everything's going. But it's okay, we're still battling on. So I'm just placing the stamp face down onto this black cardstock. That would just die cut. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure I've got it lined up perfectly. And I, and I have. It's taking my magnet off there. So I'll just make sure it's lined up perfectly. That looks okay. But again, like I always say to you guys, it is a piece of card. If it doesn't work, if it doesn't work, it's okay. We'll do it again. So I'm just going to ink this one up. with the sticky ink pad and rather than your traditional heat embossing we will go with the abstract powders for a change and I think somebody has actually asked me to do this one so if you are watching I hope this helps so I'm just pressing down all over the black cardstock I know the magnet is in the middle but it's still okay it will still work really nice so just set this aside so you need some scrap paper because you'll need to like burnish this so I'm just going to pop it on there like so I'm going to use a dry brush so tap the powder and then all you need to do is just pick up a little bit of the powder and brush it onto the sticky ink that you've just printed on there with your stamp so I'm just going all the way around and all you do is circular motion and push the stamp the printed stamp into the cardstock and it will give you this beautiful finish I'm going to do this all the way around And then once you've got the coverage on there and it's all covered and the detail's been picked up, then you have to burnish it. And when I say burnish it, basically just give it a good old rub. Push it in. So I'm just making sure it's all in there. Give 
give it a good old rub. Looks messy at the moment, but trust me, it will be nice. I'm just going to set this aside. I'll just get some tissue. Just some normal household tissue, nothing fancy. And then pop it into your mat like so and give it a good old rub. This will tidy it all up. Turn it over there. So the where there's no sticky ink, obviously it won't stay, it'll go back to black. Make sure you give it a good old dusting. And get this beautiful pearlized edge on there. So it's a little bit different to the gold one we did on here, but it still stands out. It's really, really lovely. So I'm just going to take the frame that we did earlier. And I'm just going to pop some glue behind this one. I'm just going to stick this absolutely flat. So not too much glue because I don't want it to seep out onto the black cardstock and ruin it. Pop this inside. When you're happy it's in place, hold it down. There you go, you can see there how lovely that is. You can see there. Really lovely. And then the centre part in here is this part here. So this was the piece that came out of the centre, but I did it in black. So I'm just going to pop some pads behind this one and create a little bit of dimension on this card rather than it be flat. inside and there you have two cards two different techniques two different sizes can you see those so let's just show you a traditional card size then I'll just show you a card blank so you can see try and get an idea of the size so this is your traditional card and this is the cards we've just made so I would say probably the half a size maybe a little bit bigger so two beautiful cards, two different concepts, but it's just an alternative way of using your dies. So they're not just a die, create your own card shapes. You don't have to use the stamp and die stamps that are coordinating within the sets. You could use your other stamps, whichever you've got in your stash. And if you have got nesting dies already at home, get them out and make some shaped cards because it's sometimes a little bit creative to step out the box and create something a little di bit different to what you would normally make. So I will say goodbye for now and I will be back with you on Wednesday at 4pm. Have a great evening whatever you're doing. Take care everybody. Bye.